It is a busy time in fall prep sports, perhaps the busiest. Good morning, I'm Ashley Moore, and we are knee deep in the playoff season here in Colorado. Last week, we had state championship golf and yesterday state championship tennis over in class 5A at Denver City Park, where the entire season came down to one final match. Yeah, baby! That's just the sound of the four doubles champions setting the tone for the 5A state tennis championship. Awesome. Cherry Creek's Postle and Eichelburner, who say the sweetest victories are over Val. Yeah, yeah, that's big. It definitely we, feels good over our rival. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Creek would take home the big one, the one doubles crown, crowning Matthew Hugh and Chris Cosadino. It's been four years, finally got another one and hopefully we can do it on Tuesday. Over in two singles, Valor's Jace Nakamura took home the title for the second straight year. He's younger, like he doesn't have as much experience as me, so I just kind of need to come out firing because he's probably going to be a little bit more nervous, so hitting tighter, so it kind of worked, and I was just like, have fun, don't overcomplicate things. But to the match we were all waiting on, one singles. The first match, I just came in with butterflies. Every match I had butterflies. Today, same thing, but I just, my coach just said, just. Just play. Broomfield's Kai Truyo beats Grandview's Justin Sun in straight sets for his first ever state title. Uh, everything. I wanted this since freshman year. Um, I was fortunate to make it my freshman year, but I always lost in the first round every time I made it. But right now, it's just amazing that I finally won it for everybody here. So many people came out today. So. Sharing the special moment with his mom, Truyo finishes his high school career a state champion. Over in class 4 8 one doubles, it was Colorado Academy versus Kent Denver. And that's Matthew McKee and Clayton Johnson on match point as Kent Denver sends it long and Colorado Academy are state champions. I wonder if you could tell how they're feeling right now. It's just ecstatic. I, I like can't even describe I can't, the feeling. I can't be put into words. <laughs> can never replicate it, ever. <laughs> and in one singles, it was Devlin's Ashwan Karsami versus Denver Saps' Rafael Wheeland. And after years of making this tournament, Karsami is crowned the 4A state champion. Uh, it means a lot for sure. You know, going off senior year with a with title means a lot. It means the world to me. Like, I have an awesome coach, awesome teammates, awesome parents to help out. And it just means a lot. So, yeah, it's definitely, I'm definitely a little emotional and sad that, you know, I'm walking away from high school tennis, but... Yeah, it, it means a lot going out with a title. Well, it's also state championship flag football time, and Cherry Creek says they are ready to take on undefeated Arvada West. So without further ado, let's get to it. A West ball first when Sailor Swanson gets the snap and immediately launches one downfield and right to the hands of Sarah Walker. Seven zip Wildcats. All right, so Cherry Creek will try to answer now as the QB gets flushed out of the pocket and the ball is picked off by Swanson to put her team in scoring position. And well, she's the quarterback, so hey, she'll start with the ball and get it to Molly Shellpepper, who squeezes it in for a touchdown. All right, so it's 14 0 now and more A West. Swanson and back to pass and she airs it out again. This time Aubrey says Spada is wide open and in for the third touchdown of the game, 21-0 Wildcats. Now Cherry Creek would get on the board though after this controversial touchdown ruled complete. But A West was too dominant from start to finish. Where there was success in the air, there was success on the ground, like here, where you see freshman Alex Antio bobbing and weaving through everybody. And in for the tutty, as Arvada West finishes the season 25 and 0 to win their first flag state championship in program history. And you already know, we caught it with Swanson after the game as to what this title means, especially with everyone coming back next season. I wanted to win so bad, like last year we came here and we just came short and there was definitely extra motivation there to win. Next year is just going to be just as fun, we're looking forward to it and we got a lot of great players so it should be good too. <laughs> Well, let's head over to a big Friday night matchup. The Dakota Ridge Eagles taking on the Golden Demons, and we'll begin with Dakota Ridge ball. At the goal line is QB Blake Palladino calls the keeper to score it, keep it 7-0. All right, so in the first half, now Eagles back to kick a field goal 
when it's blocked, Mason LeBride comes up with it, and will it be a first of the season? I think so. LeBride down the field for the kick six. It is 14-7 Golden at halftime. Well, now to the second half. Hand off to Golden's Luke Chevier, who finds a crease and pay dirt to go up 28-7 Golden. But you can never be too comfortable. Five seconds to go in the game. Dakota Ridge down seven when Paladino airs it out to Ellinger in the back of the end zone to tie the game at 28. And it all comes down to this. Eagles, Jack Seidel back for the PAT, and it's good. Tied at 28, but now it's 29-28. Dakota Ridge scoring 22 points unanswered for a huge one-point win over the Demons. Here's senior QB Blake Paladino after the dub. That was, a, that was my first experience uh, with a comeback at that level, especially in a game as big as this with a league championship uh, on the line. We just like, we all know that we have each other's backs and that we're a good football team. We all trust each other. And we just like on the sideline, we have each other's backs and that just translates to the field. Well, let's get to a top play now, sit by a viewer. Our battle West versus Columbine when Logan do a check, lays his body on the line to keep this key play to get within a touchdown of Columbine. Now, Columbine would win, but still an excellent catch as Columbine remains undefeated. And while we're here, we might as well take you to double overtime as George Washington with the tie game scores the game winning kick. That's Jeff Pellet who wins it. Pellet game winning PAT to take it 34 to 33. All right, so congratulations are in order for one of the most decorated coaches in all of Colorado prep sports and one of the most intimidating figures you'd ever want to coach against. Denver East alum and head basketball coach Rudy Carey has been inducted into the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame. Now, Carey has been a head basketball coach in Colorado for four and a half decades, winning three state high school titles at Manual in this past year, not state title number seven at his alma mater, Denver East, which won its last 26 games of the season. With a record of 10 state championships, Carey also broke the record for most winning this coach with win number 877 to break the mark previously held by Dick Cotty, a 2005 Hall of Fame inductee. So major congrats to Coach Carey on such a tremendous milestone and doing it all where he grew up. All right, so before we go, you know what time it is. It's honor roll time. Time to announce who wins the nine news play of the week. And the winner is... Noah Lyles, or at least that's who he looked like. This play from Landon Callback. He gets out to the left and watched his hurdles over a defender. My goodness, for a huge game. So congrats to Callback. And I'm already looking forward to the top plays of this week. Now, reminder, we can't be everywhere. So if you're ever at a game and you see something you'd like to feature on the prep rally, send it over. That's all, folks. I'm Ashley Moore, and we'll see you next time right here on the Nine News Prep Rally.